This program is brought to you by Emory University. So when we first started um, working on this project when I was a first year, we were really excited about it because um, we're using an established technique but in a new way. So the technique is chromatin immunoprecipitation or CHIP and it's a way to determine where proteins actually touch the DNA within the cell and that's an important, that's important information to have. Um, usually it's used for things like transcription factors that have um, known binding sites within the DNA at um, the beginning of genes called promoters and um, then you can use that information to identify new um, binding sites for proteins. And in our case, we're, use, we're interested in a class of proteins called uh, DNA repair enzymes. And so these proteins actually don't have defined areas where they bind. They bind more in a random way. And from um, previous studies, we thought that they, had, that they would bind at sp with specific patterns, but we didn't know what those patterns were. So the goal of my project was to identify those patterns. Um, and this was um, exciting for us because in the field of DNA repair, this was kind of uncharted territory. So there are generally two types of projects that either graduate students or postdocs uh, would undertake if they work in my lab. Uh, one type of project involves uh, just actually stepping into a system that's well established and cranking out the data, uh, such as in the model systems that we use. Uh, whereas a, a, another feature of the work that we do in DNA repair and genetic and genomic stability uh, has to do with the development of new, methodology, new methodologies and technologies. And those projects are more risky, more open-ended, uh, and uh, there are more question marks associated with whether or not they're going to be successful. I usually make a call after sizing up a graduate student or the postdoc uh, in terms of placing them down the well-worn crank out the data track or is this the kind of person that's going to be successful for developing many uh, of the uh, methodological features of their project which is uh, significantly more challenging. So. Moving into sort of uncharted territory for the DNA repair field, this project was really risky. And so that's good because you can um, get a lot of new information. But for me, it was frustrating because um, after a while, I wasn't really accumulating a lot of data. And my, I saw my classmates and my peers kind of accumulating data and having nice presentations with lots of nice results. And I didn't really have that. So one piece of advice um, I would have for new students would be to have a backup project, talk to your advisor about um, having multiple projects maybe to work on at once and for me that was nice because eventually I was able to um, while I was working on my main chip project I was able to garner my backup project into a nice um, story that we're getting ready to submit soon for a publication. One of the most important skills that you can acquire in graduate school is um, communication and so in particular for me it was really important to learn how to communicate well with my advisor. And um, what that entails is really just kind of understanding their personality and understanding your personality and then just kind of putting that together to figure out the best communication style. So with my advisor, um, Paul, he, when we would meet, because he's an established professor and he's a very busy guy, I would have like a written agenda and I would go in with my printed agenda and then I would have all my data and PowerPoint slides with everything labeled so we could just go in there and, you know, we could talk about the data and I would get what I, the feedback I needed and then he would, you know, be able to go and move on to his next appointment. And so for me, the, that was really a fruitful way to set up our meetings. And then um, another thing, another aspect of his personality is that he has very high expectations. And so for me, that was good because it kind of pushed me to um, produce data and to be a better communicator. And um, I think it really helped me have a more successful um, graduate career because, you know, I wanted to meet his, his high expectations. Lydia was ultimately successful uh, because she showed really a, an incredible degree of resilience and perseverance in terms of uh, her ability to um, uh, 
respond appropriately, I think, to failure uh, and uh, to uh, be able to take whatever information, even if an experiment failed multiple, multiple times, take some positive information away from that uh, experience and apply it uh, in going forward and trying to make something positive uh, happen uh, with that component of her project. In this case, I think Lydia is a prime example of how uh, a person has to be um, really committed and dedicated to looking at the goal at the end of the road uh, and realizing that uh, the, the road indeed is going to be rocky towards uh, attaining that goal. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.